Welcome, everybody. This is Dr. Eric Woodruff, and I'd like to take a few minutes of your time to introduce you to the Certified Energy Manager Program. Just in about seven minutes, I'm going to go through the program, the certification, and how it can add value to your career. As I mentioned, my name is Dr. Eric Woodruff. I've been associated with AWE for a long time. I've been a board member of this program, the CEM program, since 1999. And in 2011, I served as the president of AWE. Uh, I have some clients on the screen there, and I've written some books, so I know something about this field. But I can tell you that the other instructors, um, I can tell you I'm at least matched in experience by the other instructors that teach the CEM. And so it's a great honor to work with these people. But enough about me. What, what you really want to know about is what is the Association of Energy Engineers, and more particularly, what is the Certified Energy Manager Program? AWE has been around for a long time, 35 years, actually a few years ago. That's just the logo. I think we're going on 36, 37 years now. Um, but pretty much the industry go-to network, if you will, for the following topics that are in the middle of the screen here, energy management, basically, but all these other subtopics, which are part of energy management. Um, the association publishes several journals that are out quarterly roughly and, and just numerous books on the subject of energy management or anything that's affiliated with you know, non-residential facilities primarily. Um, the association is in 89 countries, 16,000 members, very well respected worldwide. And the CEM program being the flagship certification of the association, the longest certification the association's had, is really required by many uh, governments, uh, U.S. agencies, companies, utilities, et cetera. If you want to get a job, the CEM might be the ticket to get an energy management position. So pretty valuable thing to, to consider. There are many CEMs out there, but there are also many CEMs that are going to be retiring in the next 10 years, according to labor studies. Um, and so you know, you've, you've got this incredible opportunity where there's going to be, um, you know, a dwindling supply of qualified energy managers in a, in a field that's rapidly growing. So having that CEM is something that really sets you apart from the competition. Um, and again, it's somewhat of a who's who in energy management. So as I mentioned, um, the CEM is, you know, a very good way to distinguish yourself, a way to, you know, it shows that you've passed a test on a broad range of subjects. It shows you have experience in the field, and that can be the ticket to, a, you know, getting a job versus not getting a job. Um, Training-wise, the CEM is, is offered in live seminars all over the world. I can tell you as an instructor, I've been in the last year to uh, China, Hong Kong, uh, Australia, South America, and two weeks ago I was in Dubai. Um, the seminars, the live seminars typically are five days, a very intense five days. Uh, where we go through curriculum, which I'll cover in a minute. You can also take an online course, which is you know, far less hours of commitment, and it's online. You, you don't have to travel, which is nice. But those seminars are primarily for people who are very experienced in the field, um, probably have a PE and have been working in energy management for quite a few years. Because the online seminar, obviously, with its time limits, doesn't have the time to go into the depth that a five-day, you know, eight hours a day um, could go into so much detail. Of course, local chapters in different countries also offer training, and you can, you can have that as an option, which is, might be far less expensive if you're really limited on your travel budget. Um, the curriculum of the CEM, very comprehensive, all-encompassing program that covers everything from auditing to all of these subjects that I've got on the screen here. But you know, just to go through them quickly, we, we cover the auditing, how to do benchmarking. We talk about different types of equipment you might use from infrared sensors to temperature gauges to compressed air measurement techniques. We talk about codes and standards and indoor air quality and some of the rules that we have to work within in an energy management position. Purchasing rate structures, demand structures, ratcheting. We cover economic analysis, net present value and life cycle costing. We cover it in very much the way an MBA course on that topic would be, except that we take about a semester's worth of material and condense it down in about two hours for that one session. But economic analysis is something you can use beyond your energy management career. Um, as I said before, many CEMs get promoted, and that's a skill set you can take with you. Um, we cover electrical systems. We cover lighting systems, and not just the theory, but how to do retrofits and other aspects of lighting quality. We cover motors and variable frequency drives, uh, tremendous savings opportunities there. Green buildings, LEED, Energy Star, 
we talk about other programs in other countries as well. Um, HVAC, obviously, if your clients are trying to save energy, it's probably going to have something to do with HVAC. So that's a, a key focus area. We cover boilers, compressed air, and pump systems, very energy intensive uh, mechanical systems, thermal energy storage. CHP and renewables is a growing area that we're always focusing a lot of time on because that's something as uh, our utility grid gets more deregulated and also all these different options and new technologies, that's definitely a growth area. Um, we cover maintenance, tremendous you know, opportunities there, real quick payback things in, in fixing leaks, and we'll show you what the economics are of fixing compressed air or steam leaks. We'll show you how to do thermography, et cetera. But again, very, very quick shots of all these different subjects, basic controls, building automation, and then financing. Because sometimes if you don't have the cash on hand, uh, financing may be the only way you can get projects done. And if you don't get projects done, they don't save any energy. So we cover all of these different subtopics in a way in the CEM that's um, you know, very all-encompassing, very special. On the right-hand side of the screen here, you'll see the test, roughly how, what percentage of questions are in the different subjects. Um, you know, for the exam. Uh, the CEM exam, it's a four hour open book, open note test, but I'll tell you, it's a very, very tough test. Most people are in that room uh, a full three and a half hours and some all the way up to the last minute. So um, don't be fooled by the open book, open note thing. It is a very challenging test, which is part of the reason why the CEM is so well respected. To pass the CEM, you've got 130 questions, you gotta get, I think 68% of them correct, or 67.5, roughly 70% correct to pass and not everyone does so it's something you're going to have to work hard on and I would I would encourage you to study hard for that exam it'll make the after exam experience much more fun for you but anyway that's a quick view of what the test is about um, once you pass the test and if you do have the you know required experience and, and background you can you know be approved by the board quite quite easily um, when I say background and experience, typically if you have an engineering degree, you need three years experience in energy management and then passing the test would be your you know, ticket to get that certification on the right hand side with your name on it instead of mine. But there are all alternatives. If you don't have uh, you know, a bachelor's degree or maybe you have a business degree, maybe you need five years experience. If you don't have any degree, maybe you need 10. So there's kind of a sliding scale of ways you can qualify. If you don't have a, um, you know, if you don't have the experience and you pass the test, you can get to what's called as an EMIT, which is an Energy Manager in Training, which which says, hey, I passed the test. I'm a smart person. I just need a few more years to get, you know, the full qualifications met. And you can call yourself an EMIT, and then as soon as you've accumulated those years of experience, you'll automatically become a CEM. So lots of pathways there, and I encourage you to do that because you know certifications are valuable. That's once again, you know. Uh, you'd be surprised how many uh, different uh, entities, companies, organizations, governments require you to have the CEM to get the job. And in some places I've taught, if, you, if they were in the CEM class and they didn't pass, they lost their job. So hopefully you feel a little pressure than some other people. You can learn a lot more about the CEM program on the website at AEE. There's, you can click on certification CEM. You can sign up for a seminar right there. Um, and there's just a whole bunch of other good information on there. You can watch webinars on NPV for free, net present value, and learn a lot just to get prepared for the exam. And I would encourage you to do that. Again, you go to the website, make a phone call, and get yourself set up. If you're interested in this program, I can tell you it's definitely helped my career. It's helped thousands of people that I've trained, um, not only in getting a job, but succeeding in their job, in, and also succeeding in saving a tremendous amount of energy. So. That's a little bit about the CEM program. Hopefully this helped you, and I wish you all the best. Again, this is Dr. Eric Woodruff, and have a great day.